I have the saran wrap on there. I wrap some electrical tape around the base. Today we're gonna we're gonna do my first European mount. When you have lots of deer on the wall like this one and this one. This one. Oh. Sometimes you might want to have a European mount done. Got so many deer heads on the wall, turkeys, and everything else. But sometimes you might want to just do maybe a a European mount. A European man. Like this one in here. Today I'm going to be doing a European man. It's the first one I've ever done. Um, I hope it'll turn out good because I plan on doing a lot of it. I may even start doing other people. So. Wait, what did you say? Let's rewind that real quick. A lot of them. I may even start doing other people, so. <laughs> so we're gonna start with step one. We're gonna clean off the deer head. Oh, 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 oh. Uh oh. You had a good time trying to get them on. I'm gonna help you get them up. I remember when you just shot that deer. That's when you got him right out of the woods. Yeah, I was glad I made a good shot on this deer. He was out. Look at how handsome he is. Look at that dead thing. About 115 yards. And it ended up being a good deer, so. A sharp knife is real important because you got a lot of cutting to do. That's where you decapitated the poor deer. Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. And I guess that's what you need to do when you do a European mount. So what I'm gonna do first, since it's my first one and I don't wanna scar up my antlers, I'm gonna wrap them up with uh, old shirts and such to uh, keep from scuffing them up on the concrete while I'm moving the head around. So. Before skinning your deer, you might wanna get you some gloves. So I see you got your gloves, you got the towels, you got your deer head. And I'm gonna wrap the towels up with that, the antlers up with the towel and I'm gonna duct tape it so I don't scuff them up. Oh, I see your duct tape, okay. Oh, what happened here? In here, and I just skin it back. This is my first one, so we'll see how it goes. What were you doing here exactly? I just started on the lip and cut down. Uh, you can see that's about the hardest part of it. Right? A few minutes later. All right, folks. It's been about 40 minutes, and I've got most of the meat off of it. Um, I still got a little bit of hair around the skull, but uh. About 45 minutes to do that part. Honestly, that looks like a horror movie kind of, kind of gory. I need to call a taxidermist because I'm wanting to go hunting this evening. I want to see if I can leave it like this or is that grease going to hurt it. So I'll find out after I talk to the taxidermist. So sharp knife, about 40 minutes to get this far. Don't worry about the eyes or the tongue. All that will come out when you boil it. After this part, what happens next? Take the rags off that protect the antlers. Uh-huh. And then we'll go to the next step. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, folks. In about 45 minutes, you're going to be at this step right here. So you're going to get all the meat off of it, and then you're going to get ready to boil it. So you get all of it you can. Don't worry about the eyes or the tongue. So we're going to we're gonna put it in the water, and... uh how it turns out. I'm gonna boil it. So 
good friend of mine let me borrow you a cooker and a aluminum pot. So I'm gonna put the head in and see about how much water I need to use. And then we'll get the head on. I have my Dawn in there and I have the the, the heat on it. We're gonna get the water to, on a slow boil, then we'll put the head in and boil it to get this extra meat off of it. So what I'm doing is I'm taking saran wrap and I'm wrapping down to the base so I don't lose my color. And then I'm gonna take electrical tape and wrap it real tight. So once I have the saran wrap on there, I wrap some electrical tape around the base real tight here so you don't lose your color when you boil it. So that's what it's gonna look like. Okay, so this is what I borrowed from Mike. What you're gonna do is get you some Dawn and some baking soda. some baking soda in there. I don't know how much. Get you some Dawn. Squirt it in there. All right, I've got to take this over here and, and figure out how much water to put in here, so. You want the water up to the base of the skull. About like that. I guess that'll be enough. I'm gonna put a little bit, put a little bit more in it right there. So it covers it all the way. So I've got the head completely immersed. I'm gonna set a timer for 45 minutes. I got the heat on just a little bit right there. I don't wanna cook it too much, but I'm gonna go with 45 minutes and try to clean it off with the pressure washer and see how that does. I borrowed a pressure washer from a good friend of mine and uh, we're gonna see how it does. 12 seconds later. So we're still waiting on it. We got a real light boil going on. If the hardest part is done, I'll never pay anybody to do this again. Cause so far it's been very easy. The goal is to kill them big enough where you ain't gotta worry about doing a European. But some racks are pretty, like this is, this is a pretty rack for a European mount. Nice and heavy. We're gonna try 45 minutes and see how much we can get off. I'm gonna get the jaw aged. See how it comes up. By sheer coincidence. Okay, so the head has been in there about 45 minutes. I'm going to try to spray it off and see how it comes off. Okay, this is after the first bowl. There's still some meat. Not much, but a little bit in the corners and in the cracks and crevices. I'm gonna put it in there for a little bit more, not much longer, in the boiling water. And uh, what I'm gonna do before I do that is I'm gonna take a magic stick, a chisel, and some needle nose. And I'm gonna try to pick that stuff out before I put it in this water. You don't wanna cook it too long, you'll make the bone brittle, so. I'm gonna be mindful of that. Many tic tacs later. Okay, so 45 minutes wasn't long enough. I got a lot of the meat off, but a lot of the meat is still on there. So we're still going at it. Make sure you wear safety glasses whenever you go to spray your meat off, your head off. 
because it gets really nasty. <laughs> so Dawn and baking soda. I got it filled up about the height of the skull and I have to go to the store to get some peroxide. So I'll be back and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. One semester later. Okay, this is my second bowl and uh, it's been about 30 minutes after the 45 minutes and uh, I'm looking at it. I got most of it off. Uh, we're getting about ready to just do nothing but pressure wash. You're probably not going to get everything by just boiling it. You got to you gotta pressure wash it off. So. I saw that the teeth were still like dark. What are you going to do with that? Uh, I think most of them people, they paint them because mm -hmm. I... Well, I used the peroxide on them for a long time and they never did really get much lighter. So, but when it turned, when, when I got done with it though, they were white enough for me. Yeah. I don't like painting them. I like just the natural bone look. They'll get to see how it looks like. I think I need to quit boiling it. I think it's cooked. All it's going to cook. I just need to. So here you were just tweaking the last finishing touches, huh? Yeah, I was looking at it to see what all I needed to do, but you can't get but so much off with pliers and all that. You know, once you boil it twice, you're going to start weakening the bone. It's time to do the pressure wash and then we're going to add the peroxide so I went to the beauty supply place and uh, purchased uh, some peroxide and this is it right here 40 volume this is a gallon so I can do this for a while I can get several deer with this much so can you use like regular bleach with it you can't use bleach and you can't use regular peroxide you have to use this kind this is what kind everyone uses and you get your brush like this right here. And I also so got I'll take this brush. A brush. So you're gonna brush the peroxide on the skull to whiten it? Yeah. This on there. With this brush. Okay. So Okay, so I've boiled the head. I've wrapped it. And uh I still got a little bit of cleaning to do. Most of it's done. I boiled it for about an hour and a half. I didn't want to boil it too much. Um, still got some meat to get off of it. But uh, I tell you what, I won't ever pay to have that done again. That's pretty easy. Very easy to do, fellas. Very easy to do. It's it's messy when you got when you use a pressure washer. It's pretty messy, but uh, I tell you what, it's going to look good when I get it bleached. So was it a lot of pressure to get it pressure washed, or what kind of pressure are we talking about? Uh, this one I think is 2500 PSI. So something like you use for cleaning cars or something. Yeah, and you got to be very careful. That, bro that bone is real brittle, and you can destroy it. So you just don't, you don't want to get too close to it, but... You just want to get just enough to get the meat off of it and don't apply too much pressure on it because it'll crack and yeah, the water will go I'm right through. I'm sorry you weren't able to get a video of uh, pressure washing the deer skull itself. Well, it's so messy, you, it'll be all over the place. I mean, it was all over me. Okay, this is the finished look after I done the bleaching for a, a few times. It turned out like this right here. I actually like mine better because the one I paid to have done, they painted the skull on top of bleaching it. I like the natural bone look. Look at that. You did pretty good. It's, yeah. looks authentic. Um, you're just going to wrap your horns up with the cellophane and electrical tape. Wrap them up good at the base and do not get the bleach or the uh, hair fabric stuff the, on the uh, horns. How long did you bleach them? You're going to bleach it for 24 hours. 
Pull, hours. Yeah, pull so it that's out. A, that's one that you bought, right? That's the, that's the one I had done. I shot the year before. Yeah. And the one beside it is the one that I did. That's professionally made, though. Yeah, way. and I like mine better, actually. Oh, they painted the. They one. painted it. They painted the skull after they cleaned it and all, and I, I just like mine better, but I like the bone look better. You can see that that one's been painted. So 24 but hours. You're gonna you're gonna get it in all the cracks and crevices. The bleach. Let it sit for 24 hours, then wash it off if it's not as white as you want it. Start over again. Just put it all in all the cracks and crevices again. Wash it off. If you don't like how white it is, do it again. You're gonna keep doing it until you get the desired whiteness. And that's the finished product, huh? Yeah, and I was very pleased with it. Um, it looks good looking oh, white. Yeah. Yeah, just make sure you don't get none on the horns. So you didn't put nothing on the horns? No, that's nothing on the horns. You just want to make sure that you don't wrap them real tight with some electrical tape at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Put you some saran wrap around them. And uh, just keep applying the peroxide on them until you get it the white as you want. It took me two times to do it. Twice? Oh, that's Twice. not bad. No. That's not bad. That looks so good. Really professional. So are you taking orders? No. <laughs> well, I, you got to have a pressure washer, and I borrowed mine, so I don't want to keep borrowing stuff. So Once you need a big it. pot, and you need a pressure washer. If you've got that, then... Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I had that, then, oh, yeah, I'd be doing them. Look at the bottom. You did good on the teeth, too. Yeah. The teeth are harder to get. Make sure that you rub the peroxide all over the teeth. Real good. See, so look at you with your prized trophy. Give it everything, and you did, didn't you? It's a prize. I, it ain't. It ain't the one I want, though. <laughs> I want a Boone and Crockett deer. What's a Boone and Crockett deer? Uh, deer? I think it's 150 inches or bigger. Wow. Well, look at that. I mean, you did genuine good job. So, if anybody wants like advice or help, can they write to you? Uh, yeah. Through what Facebook? Yeah, just look me up on Facebook. Send me a message on Messenger. And the link is going to be underneath the video anyway. So, everybody, thank you for watching. Any questions, just hit me up and I can guide you through it. Yes. Be careful with them nose bones. Oh, the, the ones right on front. Yeah. <laughs> look at you so proud. I'm proud of you. You did a good job. Thank you so much for watching the Chris and Tina Johnson project. We appreciate your continuous support just by you watching. And we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Take care. Be safe.